tell me about your earliest memory, like the first thing you you remember of your life. Shit, the first thing, seriously, yeah, yeah. Shh, popping, bro. <laughs> seriously, really? yeah, I was two years old. I was two years old, nice. and I remember being scared and looking at my cousin. We're at a movie theater. I always tell this story because this never. I could so vivid in my mind, you know, I'm like, I could see everything, but it's like this stage, a theater, like the screen, these red velvet curtains, and everybody's dancing. And I'm like the last one, you know, my family's up there already. It's like a bunch of cousins, my brothers and sisters, and I'm next to my cousin Lydia, and I'm like, not my cousin Lydia, I think Becky. And I'm going, I want to go up there. And they're like, go, go dance. I go have fun, you know, go enjoy. And I remember just being the last one to go up there. And then I just started like dancing in front of people. And I was like, mm, mm, mm. <laughs> like doing like little, little whatever I could think of that. Well, I'm just like trying to follow them, you know? So I realized like, yeah, that was my first like memory, you know? Um, that I could think of. That's crazy. So we see that the dance is like from from the early beginning of, of your life. Yeah, this is cool. Yeah. All right. Your first success in life that you think of. Um, first success in life. Uh, shit. That's a good question. I think um, was winning a competition, even though I didn't get nothing from it, but winning a competition on TV. Yeah, it never aired. Well, it aired, but it was like a whole different show. They changed the name and made it something else. But like we were supposed to like receive an agency if we won, you know, and I ended up winning the TV show, but the show like never aired and nothing ever came out of it. So it was just really whack, you know, but it was really dope to see like I could perform to infected mushroom, like an EDM artist on stage over ballet, over like all these other dance styles and, and artists and like really make something of this art, you know? Yeah. Um, the way I presented it, the way I dressed, like everything, everything. And I realized that there was a bigger picture from that point on. How um, old were you? Um, I don't even remember, dude. I, I just, because it was like just something to do. And my friend was like, yo, we have this show, let's do it. And I was like, okay, cool. And since I won, I was like, yeah, and then nothing out of it, you know what I'm saying? So it was kind of like, ah, all right. But I know I was in my 20s, I was like in my early 20s. It had to be like maybe 2003 or four, maybe 2003. All right, so we started dancing locking here yeah. at this point, I think. Oh yeah? <laughs> nice. It's like the first, first information that locking exists, it's like came to Poland. There was actually uh, a locking group from France on there. Yeah. Yeah, and um, that oh, on the, the show. In the show. Yeah. Oh, cool. And they were from, uh, what, I think it was Cool Pockets. Cool Pockets. He's a locker from the Valley, from the San Fernando Valley. Yeah. yeah. Uh, from Chain Reaction. Yeah, I know Chain Reaction. Yeah. So he was like, I remember uh, it was, it was Paul Guzman. Oh yeah. Yeah. I yeah. He was a, he was a douche, to me. Yeah. He came up to me and was like, first question he asked me was like. Who's your inspirations, you know? And I started naming like Mr. Animation, Mr. Re, you know, Chuko. And then I was like, you know, Mr. Wiggles, but not his dance, like more his lifestyle. And I guess he totally ignored that and was like, see? And he started going off on me about like the popping culture or whatever. And I was just like, before I could even finish, like who else, you know? I was like, okay, so you're obviously, that, that, that hit a button. <laughs> like, I mean, I'm just, I didn't pop like Wiggles, but I was like, you know, I respected the man, dude. I was like, don't, you know, take it a whole, take it out of context. But 
yeah, I don't know if he tried to like discourage me or he was just a douchebag, but yeah, kind of rubbed me the wrong way at that time. But at that time, it didn't even bother me. I didn't really care. I still won, you know? Okay, cool. First disappointment in life? Uh, first disappointment was my family splitting apart. My family splitting apart was a really, really like, I, I couldn't believe it. I didn't, I didn't know what was going on. There was no communication within my family. Nobody said, hey, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna spend some time separate and um, I'm sorry, you know, like, but we're gonna have to like figure out what to do from here. It was just like, we just moved and there was no communication whatsoever. So it was disappointing to find out that my parents were no longer connected in some way, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Right, we already talked about it, but where the dance came in your life? Like, I mean, it started, like again, I, I was two years old. Um, from that point on, I realized that dance was, was just something I could have fun doing all the time. And like, I didn't really have teachers. I didn't have all of that. I just came up with what I could. And I learned from watching TV. I learned from watching my sisters and my brothers and everybody like battle in the front yard. And I would just pick up stuff on the fly and just try to try to like do it, but also change it a little bit. Like I always wanted to do it my own way. I was stubborn like that, you know? I was like, I didn't want to look like everybody else in a sense, but I, I wanted to understand what it was that everybody else was doing. You know what I mean? So that I could flip it and just be like, yeah, that's where I got it from. You know, so it was just really weird how that worked out. But, but yeah, like it was, it was two. So I've been freestyling since I was two years old. I remember my first battle, I was like five or six years old, bro. And I got smoked because it was my sister. She purposely did this too. My sister Nitani's crew members, they were like these two brothers or cousins or whatever. I was at a, I was at a sweet, like a sweet 15, like a quinceanera, we call it. Right, it's like a sweet 16, but yeah, for yeah. Mexican culture, it's 15. It's a quinceanera. And um, yeah, I started dancing, and then my sister had two of her crewmates, like, basically fucking roast me. It was bad, because they were doing flips over each other, and I was like, who am I going to flip over, you know? I, just, <laughs> I was just doing the, what I call the James Brown split, you know? I was just like a half split and just trying to like... Running Man, Roger Rabbit, Robocop, and I was like just doing all these crazy party dancing and just like, I don't know, here's another split. Like, like, I don't know what to do from here on out, but I just didn't stop dancing, you know? I wouldn't quit. I was just never quitting on that. And no matter how, no matter how challenging it was, I was just always trying to redevelop at that time. And I think that's when I really got addicted to that kind of feeling like, like, damn, they're better than me. Like, I need to be better. I need to be better than myself. You know, like, I really wanted to be good for me. Um, so, yeah. So, six, five, six, by seven, eight, nine, um, I started miming. I was always miming, like, just playing with walls and just, like, picturing stuff. And I remember one of the funniest things I would do that my friends would love was I would, you know, act like there's a wall and then I would try to push it. And I would keep trying and, and like adjust my body and then I would fall, like the wall would fall and I would, I would fall with it, you know? But they would just laugh because I would stay and just boom! And I would hit the ground and still be in that position. Like, you know, and just look up like, what happened? And they would just laugh. They would trip out on it because it was so, like to them it was just real. And that's when I realized like miming, I would imitate Robocop. I would imitate like Short Circuit. Um, I would imitate, you know, whatever I could to make movement something real without like having, you know, without being a robot or being a machine or being a mime. So that kind of already like just started helping me create stories in my mind. And then um, I would do like these acting skits out of nowhere. I just would just act as if I was, and I mean like act, bro, like I would jump in a car and act like I'm driving and then jump out the car and just be like, hey, you know, and just be a total different character, you know, and just like, like I was smoking a cigarette or something and just like, 
you know, talking a certain way. And it was just like really interesting being a kid doing that, you know, it was just, that to me was, was life, man. Like whatever I could recreate was, was happening. Um, so by nine years old, I got a VHS tape. One of my cousin's um, boyfriends uh, gave me a tape. He's like, here, take care of this. I was like, all right. And I was excited because they knew I loved to watch movies. You know, I was always watching movies. And um, it was Beach Street. And that right there was like the golden ticket, bro. I was like, I remember this. I remember doing this. I remember everybody doing this. I remember we all danced. Like, and it just hit me, you know? Cause at that time I was home alone a lot. So again, like I wasn't busting it yet, but I was home alone. So pretty much by myself, you know? And my mom was out partying. My sister was out partying. My brother was out doing his thing. And I was home by myself. Cause I was living with my mom, uh, Eugene and Priscilla. So, Beach Street just changed my whole perspective on music, on everything. Anything I could look for to dance to, I was dancing to it, you know? My sister and her, and her friends would throw parties in our backyard. So our house was always the party house, you know? So I was a kid listening to music nonstop. Whether I liked it or not, the parties were always there. You know, so, and that's how, like, that's also what kept me dancing, is I was always at a party just doing my own shit. You know, I'd always ask a girl to dance. She was all there, I would be like, hey, can we dance? You know, because I want to dance. I was like, fuck this shit, I ain't gonna just stand here. So that was my thing. And the girl, like, the girls always loved it because they were just like, this kid loves to get down, you know? I'm just like, hell yeah. But, um, yeah, it was cool, man. That was... Nine years old, and I finally started to really like pick up Poppy. Right. At which point you like started, stopped dancing for dancing and decided that this is the thing you want to do? Like, this, this is the way you want to make your life? Um, I believe it was after 2008. After 2008, I did a, a little like showcase in Australia and I danced to um, Blood on a Motorway by DJ Shadow, right? And like, again, you know, like the whole infected mushroom stuff, like I'm choosing an elect electronic song to dance to, but it has like so much background, you know, so much background and, and history behind this music because it was from the 90s, it was from my generation and it was just, a part of me and I needed to share that with the world so 2008 I was like you know what like I can do this I can judge an event I could I could really like try to help people with dance and I don't want to be a teacher yet I don't want to be an instructor like or a teacher period I was like I just want to be able to like I want the world to see what I have to offer so that was my turning point for the culture and dance culture in general Professional wise was 2009 when I got a phone call to be a part of uh, Step Up 3, the first dance film in 3D. You know, like that to me was, that was a milestone in my life for sure. Like I never thought in my life I was gonna be boogie frantic on a, a motion picture you know what I'm saying so yeah I never like that was always the dream of course like yeah Hollywood's right there like let's just make it happen you know but I never thought like I would get a phone call I remember I worked a nine-to-five job I was getting paid like 20 an hour bro so I was like I had a good job you know it was okay I was doing okay I had insurance I had I paid rent every week I was able to buy new clothes every week like I could pay my bills I was good I didn't have any worries, but I was just something, I was like supporting my hobby. I was supporting my craft, you know? And, cause I was going out every night, dude. Every night, I would go out Monday through Monday. 
There was always a club every night to go dance to, to different music. So that's something about LA too. There's so many clubs. It's not just the top 40 shit. There's fucking eclectic music. There's, you know, salsa music. There's everything, man. But anyways, back to the point. Um, yeah, like, that, that was it. 2009, I was like, you know what? I think I can do this professionally. And I mean, it was a struggle because I was, they were pretty much like, while traveling and doing that movie, I was living on the street. I was like couch surfing and hanging out with people. It was just, it was, it was interesting how that worked out. But after that, I started to see the benefits of working in the industry. And like the fact that I can make 40 grand, like $40,000 just by doing a four weeks of actual work. Like that to me was like, holy shit, like I can make this much money. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, and then on top of my salary at work, that was like $80,000 that I made in one year. Of course, I only got to see 40 because taxes and then all the expenses of like, I had to pay for my own flights. Like everything was just like taken out of that 40. So I literally only got to really spend about maybe like $20,000 for that whole year off of just rent and my basic expenses and stuff like that. Um, which is crazy, man, because it's not a lot, you know? People were really thinking like, yeah, you made it. Like, yo, you, you, you're you making it happen. And I was like, dude, I'm broke. Like, I have no money. You know, all of this is going to my craft. Yeah. Like, I needed to wear new clothes and just like, so I can be on stage. And, and I started getting like more bookings. I started getting more like more stuff and I was like, damn, I need new pants. Like these are all fucked up, you know? And like, I needed to like, I needed to feel like I was a part of something. And that, that is what hit home for me when I realized like I was trying to impress people with, without showing them how struggle, like how much I'm struggling. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that, that was hardcore for me, but yeah. So, 2009, I was like, let me do this. I just need a good, like I need that one gig to give me a lot of money so that I can get my headshots. I can get like whatever I need needed to back up my, my business cards, like everything, you know? Mm -hmm. Just to have all that because a demo reel, that costs money. Yeah. Headshots, that costs money. Now I have friends that can do that for me, but it was just like, it's difficult to, to do that, you know? Like to sit there and like, like try to take all this stuff and let me let me break down and like to me I feel like I'm selling out when I do that and that's 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 a hard thing to chew you know some my friends always tell me like bro just fucking do it you know like who cares nobody's gonna judge you I'm like yeah but it's never been about that like I've never done I didn't do this I didn't love dance to to be that way you know what I'm saying like and now I'm starting to realize like shit I need to survive I need to make it happen so yeah, now it's becoming a necessity to, to be successful.